an introduction to Tilakana. Tilakana. Ti. Three. Lakana. In Thai, the word laksana means appearance, how something looks. Lakana means characteristics or properties. Ti lakana, the three characteristics of sankara, the big sankara. We have two kinds of sankara, which I will talk about maybe later or another day. <coughs> sankara means conditioned things. All conditioned things are aggregates of other things, which are in turn also aggregates of other things, and so on, and so on, and so on. Anyway, the material universe comes under this category, which is imaginary, but useful for communication purposes. And so, the material universe and all within it, all that we know, is subject to the three characteristic laws of Tilakana which are anicca, impermanence or transience, change, um, which also means decay, of course, to dukkha. Dukkha means tangyu naisapapda midai, cannot maintain in its original new state. Because of the first thing, impermanence, anicca, uh, dukkha, therefore, uh, leads to unsatisfactoriness because of its impermanence. So dukkha is commonly understood as meaning suffering or unsatisfactoriness. One, anicca, impermanence. Two, dukkha, unsatisfactoriness. Three, anatta not self, without an inherent, permanent quality that can be called the self, where the self resides and is the essence of the self. This cannot be found. All of these things, three things apply to the material universe and to all that is not Nibbana. All that is not Nibbana is Sankara and is Samsara, illusory realms and realms of suffering, realms that are unsatisfactory existences. There are only two things, there are Nibbana and that which is not Nibbana. There is enlightened and the pure state of that which has gone beyond and there is that which has not yet gone beyond, which is unenlightened and not yet pure. There are only these two things. There is nothing between these two things. Now, Tilakana is something that we can study and understand as we are doing in this talk intellectually and meditate on and contemplate on and further our understanding in a profound manner through contemplation. But it is not realized. When it is realized, it is spontaneously known and it is part of the enlightened view and one will not experience that as spontaneous knowledge without forgetfulness, without needing to sustain mindfulness, mindful alertness through focused endurance of sustained meditation through effort. Rather it will be natural and second nature as an enlightened state of mind that is to see tilakana, to see the three characteristics and without that we are not yet enlightened. There is something that prevents us from seeing tilakana, from directly experiencing it. There are various things and this is something which I would like to reveal for one must contemplate these things in order to destroy them and free oneself from those obstacles in order to see beyond and see tilakana as it is occurring. 
and to raise oneself above and beyond it. Seeing Tilakana is part of enlightenment. It is one of the attainments that lie along the path to enlightenment. Enlightenment is not something fantastic which the ego should desire or wish to attain. It is not something to show off with and not something which one will be able to enjoy in such a manner after having attained it because the mere attainment of such will rid oneself of the desire to wish to show off such a thing. One thing that does not let us see Anicca, impermanence, the first of the three characteristics, is the speed of dissolution. For example, a mountain or a planet or a sun or a star system might seem to be permanent in comparison to our lifespan. And we may not even see a star appear to move in the heavens if it is so far away. And that we may think it is permanent or even that it is there, when in truth, it has exploded 200 years ago, but it is 400 light years away, and it will take another 200 years be before we even realize the fact that the star has exploded so long before. A mountain is being eroded all the time, and if we could speed it up in a time loop and see it, speed it up so fast that we could watch it dissolve, we would see that even mountains are impermanent and that nothing stands still. But it is just that some things move so slowly that they do not appear to be changing. Actually, nothing gets to stay still for an instant. It is restlessness and it is tiresome. And that is Sankhara, conditioned aggregated being, the realm of becoming and illusory thought, Samsara the realm where we carry the candas and our perceptions and their objects around like heavy baggage. Rolling our heavy stones up mountains only to see them roll down the hill again and have to begin anew, just like Sisyphus. So is the wheel of samsara and dependent origination and eternal rebirth in illusory existence and becoming Becoming is never being, for becoming is always in the process of being between one thing and another thing, and never gets to be anything in particular. It is this fact that nothing is anything in particular that makes us all anatta, not self. We do not see impermanence because of the speed of change being different in different objects we might perceive. But in truth, everything is dissolving, just like sand in an old hourglass. As to dukkha and unsatisfactoriness, one does not notice this because of what we would call iriyabod or iriyabada. Iriyabada means, or in Thai, iriyabod means physical bodily movement or the movement of bodies. And so, changing movement. If you find the most comfortable position, lay in a hammock or on your favorite sofa or bed and lay down in your favorite position and get comfy. Once you've found your most comfortable position, maintain it and do not change that position. See if it is still so comfortable after 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, 55 minutes, and do not change the position, don't move. You will notice that in a short time, what was once comfortable begins to become uncomfortable and even painful. That is the presence of Dukkha. It was always there from the beginning, but because you keep changing position, you do not notice it. But it is always ever present. It just gets stronger when you stop moving. And this is the restlessness of existence in samsara, like a flickering flame that can never stand still for a single instant. It is so tiresome to carry the candas 
and be ever reborn, carrying these kandas as a heavy burden. These are two of the factors which prevent us from seeing tilakana. The third factor, anatta, non-self, is a topic which needs a talk for itself and for which I shall leave a completely different talk for to concentrate on that and that alone. So for now, I think to take these two factors and contemplate them in your meditations and when you think about the Dhamma and when you observe it, to use as a tool of measurement and to see if it applies and if one can use it to increment the truth which one discovers on one's journey and path towards liberation, self-transformation, purification and enlightenment, one step.